Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. Hello third graders and welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp. This is video number four and I'm so excited that you are here. Ah! So if you have the worksheet, which I hope you do, what I want you to do is pause the video and work it out on your own before we jump into it together, okay? That way you can see how you do on your own and then see what you need to learn when you come back. Now if you're like, wait a minute Miss McCarthy, what worksheet are you talking about? Don't worry, there is a link in the description box below. You can click that to get your worksheet. That way you can throw down your best and, and follow along with all the tips and strategies that I will give you in today's episode. Pause the video, try number one and number two on your own, and then please come back and see me because I'm gonna miss you, bye. All right, welcome back everybody. So we are on number one. Let's see how you did. Select all, ooh, select all. That means that we're going to try all or work out all of the following equations. Equations have an equal sign. That's why these right here are equations. You see all these equal signs? Yep, they are equations. If they didn't have an equal sign, they'd be called expressions. So select all of the following equations that have a missing value or amount of three. So basically, which of these choices has three as a missing number? All right, so before we even begin, let's pop out this question type right here. What kind of question is this, y'all? Yeah, it's a multi-select problem. There is probably going to be more than one answer. It's a multi-select. How do we know that? Because we have about five answer choices here. Usually when it's multiple choice, that's just one correct answer. Usually there are only four choices, but here we have five choices. Boom, let's take a peek. So we have six times what equals 16. Okay, so what we need to do is we have six groups of what equals 16? Well, if we have six groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, how many do we need in each group to get a total of 16? Let's count it out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ah! I'm missing some right here, right? That would be 17, 18. So really six groups of three equals 18 and this says 16 so is three the correct answer that goes into the box right there no so what do we do with choice a eliminate it that's right we're going to eliminate it over here not on the a because then if we mark anything on the a the computer will think oh this student meant to pick a and that's not what we want we wanted to eliminate it choice b we have 21 divided by what 
equals 7. So here we have 21 total things and we're dividing them into 7. Let's make it 7 in each group. So if we count by 7s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we still need to go higher, right, to get to 21. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Go a little higher. Let's see if we can get to 21. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh my gosh, we got to 21 evenly, equally. Yes. Okay, so if I had 21 total and I divided it into seven in a group, is the correct answer three groups? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're gonna keep this one right there. Let's take a look at choice C, shall we? So we have how many groups of four in each equals 12 total. So if we have four in each, one, two, three, four, do we have a total of 12 yet? Nope, let's keep going. One, two, three, four. That would give us a total of four and four is eight. Let me keep track down here. We've got four and eight. Let's go nine, 10, 11, 12, what? Four, eight, 12. Okay, so do we have three groups of four? Yes, we do. We have one, two, three groups of four, and that equals a total of 12. So is C the correct answer? Yes, it is. So let's keep that one right there. We'll go back and bubble them all in in just a second. So let me label this was A, this was B, this was C. Let's work out choice D now. D says 20 things total divided by five equals what? Well, I know I could draw out five groups and count up to 20, or I could count by fives until I got to 20, and I'm gonna use the multiplication mashup, which you will see in the link below to help with that. So let's count by fives until we get to a total of 20. Ready? Ah, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. Five, 10, 15, 20, four. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20. That would be four groups. So the missing value there would be four, but we're looking for a missing value of what? Three. So what do we do with choice D? Eliminate. That's right. Zero times three. Does that equal three? Well, we know something special about those zeros, don't we? We know that anything times zero equals zero like times one is zero times two is zero times three is zero times four it is zero times five it is zero na 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 zero that's from the multiplication mashup again there's a link below to help you students across the world are loving and rocking out to the multiplication mashup and it's helping them go from i understand what multiplication is to I have mastered my facts. It's helping them cross that bridge, so make sure you check that out. Anyway, back to choice E. Zero times three equals what? Zero, not three. Zero plus three equals three, but zero times three does not equal three, it equals zero. So, now I'm done, right? No, what am I forgetting? To bubble them in, oh, so good. Thank goodness I have you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and pick choice B, C. That's it, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Compare your sheet to my sheet. Are you showing your thinking in a way that's similar to mine? Make sure that as we're going through this, you guys totally have the opportunity to pause the video. So if you need to pause the video, and jot this down on your paper. You shouldn't have it looking empty. You should be taking all of the thinking that's in your head and showing how you got there. Show your journey on paper. Got it? All right, let's rock out to question number two. Number two, let's go ahead and read it and mark up our text. Remember that if I mark anything on my text that is not on yours, it's a very wise thing to take these strategies that I'm giving and making them your own. A division problem is shown, so division, do, do, do means that we are going to know the total and we will distribute equally. Four equals eight divided by what? What is the value or the amount? Value is the amount of the unknown number. Where is that unknown number? It is right there. Okay, now this says four equals 
eight divided by what? Hold up, before we even get going, let's talk about what kind of problem this is. I'm seeing a grid over here. So what type of problem is this? Yeah, it's a gridded response. So now this has this has words and numbers up there, but my brain, I like to think about it with numbers and symbols. So I'm going to rewrite what's up here. So we have four, four equals, equals eight divided by, divided by what? Another way that you could write this would be eight divided by what equals four, or even switch it around eight divided by four equals what? And this helps me to understand. So I know that this means that I have eight total divided into four groups or four things in each. So either four groups or four things in each group. I'm gonna choose to make it four groups. So I've got one, two, three, four groups. How many do I need to place in each to get my total of what? Eight. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so if I have eight total things and they are divided into four groups, which is what we selected here, that means this one is our things in each. Things in each. How many things do we have in each circle? Two, right? So four equals eight divided by two. Now it's great that I have the right answer now and see how it matches up with yours, but what's gonna happen if I just leave this problem and move on to the next one? It's gonna be wrong, right? Why is it gonna be wrong? because I didn't put my answer inside of the gridded response chart. So let's do that. Now, we can either put our answer, our missing value of two, we can either put that right here or all the way over here, either all the way starting at the left or all the way starting at the right. We cannot just put a random two in the middle or over here. It needs to be one way or the other. I like to do it right here. And you might be saying, no, Miss McCarthy, that's not how my teacher told me to do it. My teacher told me to put it over here. Do it, it's going to be right, then do it. <laughs> I want you to do what your teacher told you to do. I'm telling you, you go either way. I'm gonna put it right there. Now, if your teacher has not yet given you a specific way to do it or they let you choose, then just choose. Or if you wanna ride with me, you can put it right here, okay? In the two. Either way will be correct. All right, boys and girls, so that is how you rock out these types of questions. And I hope that you are following along, pressing pause, rewind, whatever you need to do to mark up your text in a way that I do, in a way that I show my journey and my thinking on paper. Why do we do that? Because it helps to slow our brains down and really think about the problem and what it's asking us to do. So when in doubt, draw it out. That's what I always do. Let's talk about some extra practice, okay? So if you want to get some extra practice, I'm going to send you to a few places. The first place, look at the links below or somewhere around this video. The first place is McCarthy Math 155. McCarthy Math 155 has 155 video lessons for third grade skills. It's actually for third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade, but I want you focusing on the third grade. Now make sure that you get yourself your free seven day trial. You just need an email to sign up and you'll get it free for seven days. Um, your teachers can also try it out for seven days and share the videos with you. I show you a way to do that when you sign up. Try to make it very affordable teacher, so please check that out. But what you're gonna do is look at unit three days 53 and 54 have video lessons that break down problems like this. The second link that I would like for you to check out to get some extra practice is the how to pass the math FSA video lesson on the same skill that we did today. The how to pass the math FSA series was something that I created several years back. The test itself for the FSA has changed a little bit. Like what we're doing right now in these videos with the gridded response and all that, th these are the types of questions that you're going to see on the FSA. The How to Pass the Math FSA series took place a couple years ago. Things have changed a little bit. It's still great practice. I just want you to know that what we're doing here is very current 
and there is more practice, but just know it's gonna look a little bit different than what you see. Awesome, and I also want you to check out the multiplication mashup because in third grade, you're supposed to be fluent by the end of the year with your multiplication facts. Why? Because in fourth grade and then in fifth grade, you guys are flying through multiplication. If you know your multiplication facts like that, you're gonna be a rock star next year. And I know that teachers tell you all the time, you gotta practice your facts, you gotta practice your facts. So I created a fun way for you to practice your multiplication facts. Please check it out. Tons of students have memorized this song and they are flying through their multiplication facts. Finally, I just wanted to throw out there that I am on social media. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And obviously I'm on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, on YouTube, if you're watching this and you enjoyed this video or you found something helpful with this video, it would be awesome. You would make my day if you could go ahead and pop a thumbs up on that video and you know what while you're at it go ahead and subscribe that way you're the first to know when I drop a new video and now before you go I just want you to know that you were born for a purpose that's right you are the ones that we have been waiting for so find your light and shine it bright in a watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers that's right you a world changer ready to step it up Remember, when you have to choose, choose kindness always. And I'll see you next time on the next episode. Bye, guys.